I am Judy. I am the eldest of my two girls. I was always the one who took things seriously and was self-reliant. Lily, my sister, was the total opposite. Our home was usually noisy when I was a child. Lily laughing, mom and dad gushing, and the incessant hum of the newest pop tunes. Me. I like to sit in the quiet corners with my nose in a book or my pen working on my assignments. Holidays and birthdays served as a sharp reminder of my differences from Lily. I would carefully lay aside the money I received while she delighted in her gifts, shrieking with excitement over the newest fashionable clothes or devices. What are you saving for this time, Ratch? Dad would inquire, his eyes never quite meeting the tinge of pride in his words. A laptop for studying, I would say in return. The library computers are always full. He would nod, but I could see the difference. They never really got why I wasn't interested in the same things other ladies my age were. Lily, however, was a maelstrom of shifting needs and styles. Have you seen the new iPhone, Mom? Every student at the school owns one. I require it. And that would be that, no questions asked, no need to save. I still recall the day I made my laptop purchase. I spent months saving money and finding the ideal model for my requirements. I was really proud of myself when I got it home. Look, I finally got it. During supper, I made an announcement. Mom raised an eyebrow from her meal. It's nice, my love. Lily, please tell us about your shopping day. The topic of conversation suddenly changed. My accomplishment became less noticeable as Lily began to elaborate on her most recent purchasing binge. Lily was the sun in our family solar system, and I was a far-off planet quietly orbiting on my own path. It wasn't that they didn't love me. I knew they did in their own way. The discrepancies only becoming more noticeable as we got older. Lily dabbled in crazy hairstyles and the newest styles, while I kept to my comfortable pants and sensible ponytail. The library turned become my second home, a peaceful haven where I could concentrate on my objectives undistracted. With the same tenacity I displayed throughout high school, I put myself into college applications. I devoted several evenings to refining my essays, looking into scholarships, and getting ready for entrance exams. Getting my acceptance letter and full scholarship in one package was one of my greatest life moments. I waved the letter as I ran into the kitchen. Dad, Mom, I was able to enter. Complete journey. Mom, who was assisting Lily with her makeup, looked up. Well, sweetie, that's nice. Lily, please remain motionless while I work to perfect this eyeliner. Father quickly skimmed his newspaper. Well done, Judy. Nothing less than what we anticipated. Their indifferent reaction hurt, but I was accustomed to it. I went back to my room and buried my face in the letter. This was my exit ticket, my opportunity to establish my worth. Lily, meantime, just about made it through high school. When Sarah brought home an average report card, I thought our parents would finally express their dissatisfaction. Rather, they united behind her. Mom caressed Lily's hair and murmured, Oh, sweetie, don't worry about it. College isn't for everyone. You're talented in so many other ways. Dad gave a nod of agreement. That's right, princess, you'll find your path. My ears were unbelievable to me. Are you choking with me? She barely made it through. My mother gave me a stern look. Judy, don't be cruel. Your sister has other gifts. I bit my tongue and took another step back. It was obvious that Lily would always be my favorite, regardless of what I accomplished. A breath of fresh air was college. I was surrounded by people who respected ambition and hard effort for the first time. I immersed myself into my studies with the intention of taking full use of this chance. I received a call from home one day when I was a sophomore. It was Lily, her joy bursting from her voice. Hey, Ratch, what's up? 
I'm considering enrolling in some beauty classes. It's a terrific concept, according to mom and dad. I knew she wouldn't be interested in hearing about the exciting research project I was working on or the summer internship I had secured. I couldn't help but feel a mixture of resolve and aggravation as I hung up. I was going to make the most of my route, which was mine to follow. The years passed quickly. I finished with honors, but Lily hopped from one beauty course to another, never quite finishing anything. I secured employment at a distinguished organization even before my diploma's ink had dried. It was a sad day when I moved into my own apartment. Upon organizing my scant possessions, I pondered the disparities between my existence and Lily's. While I was on my own two feet and prepared to face the world, she remained at home, receiving lavish care from our parents. I had a hectic first few months of work. I was determined to prove myself, so I put in more hours than everyone else. My commitment was not in vain. I was elevated to team leader in less than a year. I told my family the news over the phone, Mom replied. Well, that's nice, Judy. But hey, what do you know? Lily has made the most amazing new friend. We're all quite happy about him because he comes from such a nice family. As she rattled on about Lily's new boyfriend, my promotion faded into the background. I hung up feeling deflated but more determined than ever. If my family couldn't appreciate my achievements, I'd just have to achieve even more. I threw myself into my work like a woman possessed. Days blurred into nights. Weekends became just another opportunity to get ahead. My dedication paid off. I got another promotion, then another. Before I knew it, I was head of the department, the youngest in the company's history. Mr. Thompson, the owner, called me into his office one day. Judy, your work has been exceptional. We've never had someone rise through the ranks so quickly. I beamed with pride. Thank you, sir. I love what I do. He smiled. It shows. That's why I want to offer you something special. We have a program for our top employees. A chance to buy an apartment at a significant discount. You've more than earned it. The next few weeks were a whirlwind of paperwork and planning. When I finally got the keys, I felt like I was walking on air. I decided to throw a housewarming party, a chance to celebrate my success with the people who mattered most. I didn't have much furniture yet, so I bought some inexpensive plastic tables and chairs. I arranged everything carefully, making sure the disposable tableware matched the decor. It wasn't fancy, but it was mine, and I was proud of it. The day of the party arrived. My colleagues showed up first, bearing gifts and warm congratulations. Then my family arrived. Mom, Dad, and Lily swept in like a whirlwind. I noticed Lily's eyes darting around, taking in the modest furnishings with a barely concealed smirk. As the evening wore on, I noticed a pattern. Every time one of my colleagues tried to congratulate me or mention my accomplishments, my parents would swiftly change the subject to Lily. Oh, that reminds me, Mom would say, cutting off my coworker mid-sentence. Did Judy tell you about Lily's latest modeling gig? She's just so photogenic. Dad would chime in. Yes, our Lily was born for the spotlight, such natural talent. I saw the confused and slightly horrified looks on my colleagues' faces. I wanted to sink into the floor. Lily, for her part, basked in the attention. Oh, Mom, stop it. She'd say with a giggle, clearly loving every moment. Finally, mercifully, my family left. As soon as the door closed behind them, my coworker Sarah turned to me, her eyes wide. Judy, what the hell was that? She asked, her voice low and concerned. I shrugged, trying to play it off. Oh, you know, that's just how they are. Another colleague, Mark, shook his head. No, Judy, that's not normal. Are you okay? Do you need help? I felt a lump forming in my throat. 
Their concern was touching, but also embarrassing. Guys, really, it's fine. I'm used to it. Who wants another drink? As I busied myself in the kitchen, I could hear them whispering, their concern palpable. I blinked back tears, determined not to let them see how much my family's behavior had affected me. After the housewarming fiasco, I threw myself back into work with renewed vigor. Months flew by, and slowly but surely, I transformed my apartment into a space that truly felt like home. Every piece of furniture, every splash of color on the walls, was a testament to my hard work and independence. One sunny Saturday, I decided to treat myself to something I'd been eyeing for a while, a car. Nothing flashy, just a reliable sedan that would get me from point A to point B. As I drove it home, I couldn't help but feel a sense of pride. This was mine, bought with my own money, a symbol of my success. I hadn't planned on telling my family, but news travels fast. The phone rang that evening, and Lily's voice chirped through the speaker. Ratch, I heard you bought a car. That's nice, she said, her tone suggesting it was anything but. You know you're really doing this the hard way all this working and saving. It's so unnecessary. I felt my hackles rise. What do you mean? Well, the main task of a woman is to get married properly, silly. Find a man who'll support you and give you everything you need. Why work yourself to the bone when you could have it all handed to you? I was speechless for a moment. Was she serious? Lily, that's not. I mean, I want to earn things for myself. I'm proud of what I've accomplished. She laughed, a tinkling sound that grated on my nerves. A ratch, always the difficult one. Well, you'll see. I'll show you how it's done. Before I could respond, she had hung up. I stared at the phone, a mix of anger and disbelief swirling in my gut. How could we see the world so differently? A few months later, I got my answer. Lily called, her voice bubbling with excitement. Judy, you'll never guess what happened. I'm getting married. His name is Robert. He's absolutely loaded. Ratch. His parents are paying for the whole wedding. It's going to be gorgeous. As she rattled off details about dresses, flowers, and guest lists, I felt a strange hollowness in my chest. This was what she had been working toward. I realized this was her version of success. The day of the wedding arrived all too soon. I stood in the grand hall, feeling out of place among the glittering guests. Lily was radiant in her designer gown, and our parents couldn't stop gushing. I sipped my champagne, trying to quell the bitterness rising in my throat. Had they ever looked at me with such pride? Had they ever been this happy for my accomplishments? As the evening wore on, I felt more and more like an outsider. Lily was in her element, charming guests and basking in the attention. Our parents flitted about proudly, introducing themselves as the parents of the bride. As I drove home in my modest car to my modest apartment that I'd worked so hard for, I couldn't help but wonder, had I made the right choices? Was Lily right? Had I chosen the harder path? But then I thought about my job, my achievements, the sense of pride I felt every time I accomplished something on my own. Noah decided. My path might be harder, but it was mine, and that made all the difference. After Lil's wedding, life settled into a new rhythm. Work kept me busy, but my mother's frequent calls became an unwelcome interruption. Every conversation was the same. Judy, darling, mom would start her voice dripping with false sweetness. You'll never believe what Lily's been up to. I braced myself as she launched into another tale of Lily's fabulous new life. She's been invited to the most exclusive gatherings. Can you believe it? Our Lily rubbing elbows with high society. One day, after a particularly trying call, I couldn't hold back anymore. Mom, that's great for Lily but don't you want to know what's going on in my life? There was a pause. Oh, honey, she said, her tone patronizing. 
Of course we care. But you really should learn from your sister. Be more beautiful. Get things easily. Why work all day for pennies when you could have it all? A few weeks later, an invitation arrived. Lily and Robert were having a housewarming party for their new luxury apartment, a gift from his parents, of course. The night of the party, I stood outside their building, feeling small. I smoothed down my simple dress and took a deep breath before heading in. The apartment was stunning, every surface gleamed, and every piece of furniture looked like it cost more than my yearly salary. My parents were already there, cooing over every detail. I tried to blend into the background, but Lily spotted me. She sauntered over, champagne flute in hand. Judy, so glad you could make it, she said, her eyes scanning my outfit critically. I hope you're taking notes. This is how a housewarming should be done. None of that plastic furniture and disposable dish nonsense like at your place. I felt my cheeks burn. Lily, that's. But she was already moving on, leaving me with a sting of her words. The weeks that followed were a parade of Lily's extravagance. She seemed to buy everything in sight, always the most expensive option. Then came the car. I was leaving work one evening when a sleek sports car pulled up beside me. The window rolled down, revealing Lily's smug face. Look, just a little gift from Robert. Thought I'd take it for a spin. I glanced at my reliable but unremarkable Satan. It's very nice, Lily. She followed my gaze and laughed. Oh, Judy, always settling for less. You'll always be working for others while I live the good life. Two years flew by in a blur of spreadsheets, meetings, and promotions while I climbed the corporate ladder. Lily seemed content to climb from one shopping spree to the next. Our paths couldn't have been more different, but I made my peace with it, or so I thought. It was a regular Tuesday when my world tilted on its axis. Mom called, her voice uncharacteristically shaky. Judy, it's Lily. She's back home. Robert left her. He said she was too shallow, too focused on spending his money. Called her stupid. Can you believe it? He had her sign a prenup, so she's got nothing. I felt a mix of emotions, shock, concern, and, if I'm being honest, a tiny flicker of vindication. I squashed it down, immediately ashamed of myself. I'm coming over, I said, already grabbing my keys. When I arrived at my parents' house, it was like walking into a war zone. I could hear Lily's screams from the driveway. Inside, it was worse. Lily was in the living room, mascara streaking down her face, her designer clothes torn. She was throwing anything she could get her hands on, vases, picture frames, cushions. He can't do this to me. She shrieked. I'm Lily. I'm beautiful. I'm perfect. Mom and Dad fluttered around her, trying to calm her down. Sweetie, please, Mom pleaded. We'll figure this out. Dad will buy you a new dress, won't you, dear? Dad nodded frantically. Of course, princess, anything you want. I stood there, watching this scene unfold, feeling like I was in some bizarre alternate reality. This couldn't be happening. This wasn't how life was supposed to work, was it? As the days passed, Lily's tantrums didn't subside. She'd cry for hours, then scream, then demand expensive gifts to make herself feel better. Our parents, ever eager to please their favorite, complied with every request. One evening, after a particularly bad episode, I couldn't hold my tongue anymore. Maybe, I said cautiously, Lily should consider getting a job. It might help her appreciate the value of money and give her something to focus on. Besides all this, the room went dead silent. Then all hell broke loose. Lily's face contorted in rage. A job? Like you. Slaving away day after day like some, some peasant. She burst into tears and ran upstairs, 
slamming her door so hard the house shook. Before I could process what had happened, Mom and Dad rounded on me. How dare you? Mom hissed. Your sister is going through a terrible time, and you suggest she lower herself to your level. But I didn't mean. I tried to explain, but they weren't listening. Get out. Dad said, his voice cold. Get out of this house right now. Mom pointed to the door. Out, and don't come back until you can be supportive of your sister. In a daze, I grabbed my purse and left. As I walked into my apartment, my sanctuary, I felt a strange mix of emotions. Sadness at being rejected by my family, anger at their blindness to Lily's faults, and oddly, a sense of relief. For the first time, I saw clearly how toxic my family dynamic had been all these years. Life has a funny way of throwing curveballs when you least expect them. Just days after the blowout with my family, I received news that left me speechless. I'd won a company contest. The prize? A four-month around-the-world cruise. In a moment of weakness, or perhaps hope, I called my parents. Maybe this good news would bridge the gap between us. Mom, Dad, you won't believe it. I want to cruise around the world. The silence on the other end was deafening. Then my mother's cold voice cut through. Judy, how can you be so selfish? Your sister is going through a terrible time, and you're bragging about vacations. I felt like I'd been slapped. I'm not bragging. I just thought. Mom interrupted. If you had any decency, you'd give that ticket to Lily. She needs a change of scenery. You can stay home and work like you always do. Something snapped inside me. Years of pent-up frustration came pouring out. No, I said firmly. I won this trip. I earned it. I'm not giving it up because Lily made poor life choices. I'm going. The next few weeks were a whirlwind of preparation. I packed my bags, put my affairs in order, and on the day of departure, I turned off my phone. For the first time in years, I felt truly free. The cruise was everything I dreamed of and more. I watched sunsets in the Mediterranean, explored ancient ruins in Greece, and marveled at the bustling streets of Hong Kong. For four glorious months, I was just Judy, not the responsible older sister, not the family disappointment. Just me. But all good things must come to an end. As the ship docked back home, reality came crashing back. I turned on my phone, bracing myself for the barrage of messages. Surprisingly, there were only a few missed calls from my parents. Feeling lighter than I had in years, I headed home. But as I approached my apartment door, I heard noises inside. My heart raced. Had someone broken in? I cautiously opened the door, only to find myself face to face with Lily. She was sprawled on my couch, surrounded by shopping bags and empty takeout containers. Lily, I gasped. What are you doing here? She looked up, barely phased by my sudden appearance. Oh, you're back, finally. I stood there, key still in hand, trying to process the scene before me. How did you get in here? Lily rolled her eyes. Don't be dense, Judy. I used the spare keys you gave Mom and Dad. I needed a change of scenery. Everything at home reminded me of. I stood there, staring at Lily, trying to process everything. This was too much. I needed air. I'm going to the store, I muttered, grabbing my car keys and heading for the door. But when I reached the parking lot, my car was nowhere to be seen. Panic rising, I called my parents. Mom, I demanded, cutting to the chase. Where's my car? There was a pause, then Dad's voice came on the line. We sold it. The world seemed to tilt on its axis. You what? Lily needed cheering up. Mom explained, as if it were the most natural thing in the world. We used the money to take her shopping to the spa. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. That was my car. 
you had no right. Now, Judy, Dad's stern voice cut in. We're family. What's yours is ours. Don't be so selfish. Something inside me snapped. Years of pent-up frustration, resentment, and anger came pouring out. Selfish? You steal my car, invade my home, and I'm selfish. I want my money back now. They responded sharply and promptly. They referred to me as a letdown, ungrateful, and callous. For the first time, the words hurt, but they didn't shatter me. After hanging up, I strode back to my flat. Lily remained there, unaffected by the fury that was brewing within of me. Leave, I commanded in a calm yet forceful voice. Shaken, Lily raised her head. How come? Leave now? I resisted her attempts to argue and control me, as she always did. For once in my life, I prioritized myself. I hired a lawyer the following day and filed a lawsuit against my parents for the car's value. They were enraged and threatened to reject me and exclude me from their lives. However, I didn't back down. Court was involved in the case, laying out years of financial abuse and emotional manipulation for strangers to assess was an arduous task. But justice won out in the end. The court decided in my favor. In order to pay me back, my parents had to sell their home. They took up residence in a little flat while continuing to portray me as the bad guy who had destroyed their lives. But for once, I was unaffected by what they said. I felt a weight come off my shoulders as I drove my new car home from the showroom. I felt like I was actually free for the first time in my life. Free to be who I am, free from manipulation, and free from expectations. I stopped communicating with my relatives. Though not an easy choice, it was one that had to be made. The initial months were challenging. There were times when I felt alone and doubtful. But gradually, I started to create a life that suited me. I put all of my effort into my task and advanced fast. I gained new acquaintances that valued who I was rather than what I could get out of them. I took trips, picked up new abilities, and discovered enjoyable pastimes. Most significantly, I discovered how to value, respect, and love my own power and determination. I can't help but smile now as I sit in my office and take in the view of the city. Although my road wasn't simple, it was mine. Brick by brick, choice by choice, I constructed my life, and I wouldn't have it any other way.